We are backstage once again live at the Arcata Theater in St. Charles and one of the hardest working men in rock and roll, my man Jesse James Dupree from Jackal. How you doing, yeah. man? Good to be here. Good to be here. I gotta tell you, you know, I've been doing this a long time and we haven't worked together yet. And this is an exciting night for me because you know what? Jackal is great, Full Throttle Saloon is great, the speak, all this stuff. You, but you know what? I am such a fan, besides all the other reasons. And we say the hardest working man in rock and roll. A real entrepreneur. I admire the entrepreneurial spirit. Well, thank you very much. That thank you me. have. I mean, you're tireless, and you just keep on rocking. Well, thank you for saying that. Thank you. You know, you, you I'd heard your name for quite a while too. So it's kind of funny <laughs> that, that they kept us for some reason. We must have been kept apart for all these years. But it's good to be back working, or good, good to be back in the Chicago area and working with you and in, in such a beautiful theater. Too. Thank you. It's a really, really great place. No, it's something. I mean, have you always been this like entrepreneurial? Oh, you know, as it just as, doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, as, as far as that goes, you know, I uh, I grew up pouring concrete and, uh, and and driving nails, working construction, and uh, and I used to look at my hands and go, one day, you know, they were because they were just cracked and you know the sulfur from the concrete and stuff. And I and I'd say one day they're not going to be like that. And uh, and when I got a chance to you know to to sign you know a record contract and you know and have all my dreams come true as far as that go, you know, I, I just never looked back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wake up every day and. And I'll be honest with you, I feel guilty because everything I do, I love. And, you know, and it's hard to lay down and go to sleep at night when you haven't physically been working. So I just, I just hit it as hard as I can, wake up every day and take as big a bite out of life's ass as possible. <laughs> you know how that is. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever get to see those guys who used to work in a construction uh, job, uh, construction sites? Did you ever get to see those guys? Oh, oh, my, yeah, well, they, you know, yeah, they're still buddies of mine. I mean, and, uh, you know, I mean, I still live in the same town, little town called Kennesaw, Georgia. Georgia, that that's is, right. It's a mandatory law that every household must own a gun, <laughs> and uh, and I still live in, the, you know, within five miles of where I grew up. And so, you know, my buddies, it's it's it's, 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 it's interesting to see the way a lot of the roads cross there at the house because, uh, uh, like. I, this buddy of mine named Virgil, just he's, he makes me sound like I'm in New York City as far as my accent <laughs> and stuff, and. Uh, and Virgil just swings by the house every now and then and walks in or whatever. And and Brian Johnson from ACDC mm -hmm. was at the house and we were working on some songs together. So I got Brian sitting out on some steps writing some lyrics. And then my buddy Virgil just comes up. You know, he walks by, you know, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, man, you know, whatever. <laughs> then I hear Virgil go, no, shit. You know, just, just freaking out because it was Brian. But the next thing you know, they're over there looking under the engine of a car, you know, yep. under the hood of a car. That's the reality of the Georgia boys. And, uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's down home, you know, it's just where I'm from. And, and I just can't imagine living anywhere else. And you're still hanging out in Georgia. Yep, yep, still there. And, um, you know, and again, like you said, I, I, all, all the people I went to school with and stuff, I'm still buddies with everybody. Matter of fact, my longest, uh, oldest friend is Tommy Williams, my road manager. We, oh, really? He, he and I have been together since four years old. Wow. Yeah. You definitely got to be the pride of Kennesaw. Well, I don't know about that. Where's, where's the statue? <laughs> that, that's, where's the statue? That's that's where's the statue? Yeah. Where's, I mean, it's got to happen. No, you know, I'll tell you who you're talking about. You're talking about a guy named Dent Myers. Dent Myers. Is, he look, he's got this old beard. He wears his six shooters on his side every day, literally. Really? Every day up and down. He's still street. kicking. He's yeah, still he's still there. And, uh, he consulted that movie with Denzel Washington about the Civil War, uh, on the authenticity of mm -hmm. the uniforms and stuff. He's a, he's a big Civil War historian and such. But he still he leads the they, every every year they reenact the battle of Kennesaw Mountain. If you go to my driveway and make a left within fifty yards, you're on fifty yards, you're on sixteen square miles of National Park. Cannons Museum, GI, the, where General Custer came down and burned Atlanta, and he came right through where my property is. And every year, uh, uh, Dent Myers will take a bunch of guys and they'll reenact the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain. Really? Every year we keep losing. <laughs> it's got to yeah, change. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, of, a lot of history there. Now, on the bus, you guys are traveling all over the country on the bus. What music is playing in that bus? Who's, what CD is in that player? If, I'm gonna be honest with you, because I'm not going I don't, I don't BS anybody. I don't, you you want to know what I just heard coming out of the yep. bus, c coming from the back? Taylor Swift, no, nice. no, no, but Justin Bieber, yeah, gotta be. Christina Aguilera, uh, what's that song? Don't bring me down. Don't, don't, bro. Uh, uh, don't. You know, what's you that song? Know, you, know, you look beautiful. With oh, everything you said. Yeah, like, yeah. Somebody in jail for somebody was in the back cranking the hell out of it. Come back. on. Yeah. But I mean, but it goes from that to uh, you know to to. Parliament Funkadelic to Johnny Cash to Iron Maiden to I mean it's just, you sound like my lineup yeah, here yeah, at the Arcade. I, 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 you know, exactly. I mean we just we love everything and uh, and, uh, and and each one of us you know kind of just constantly are breathing different different you know play this play that you know? so I, I grew up loving all the old black artists like 
you know, Wilson Pickett and James Brown. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, that's where I that's learned that. So wow! You know, that's where I, you know, I'm out It about. comes from yeah. that, from James yeah. Brown. That's yeah. where you are signature. Joe Tex, remember Joe Tex? Absolutely. Yeah. I got you! Uh-huh, huh. Thought you got away now, uh -huh. didn't you? But now give it here, come on! Uh -huh. Look at that! You heard yeah. it here. Yeah. That and the fact that he listens yeah. to Christina Aguilera. Well, no, I didn't say I was. I in. know. I, just, I didn't used to ask what was on the bus, and that's what I heard coming out after of the back while, of the bus. I would imagine yeah. after a while, Skinner gets a little played. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it, 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 everything gets played on that bus. You know, I mean, you've seen our dressing rooms here. Real proud of it. We've got we've got lighting fixtures that look like drums, and yeah, you know, we've got place, yeah. uh, other lights that look like guitars. You've got a guitar that looks like a chainsaw. Well, how a, did that happen? Well, it don't look like one. I got a chainsaw built into it. Yeah, I mean, how did how did that all happen? Well, um, I saw Jimmy Page, mm -hmm. and I saw that that song remains the same movie, and he had that double neck guitar. Yeah, yeah. And he was wearing, you know, he had the, the pants with the dragon and brought her mm -hmm. down the leg, and he was just slick and cool. Or with the bow. Yeah, and he was, but he, but he had that big double neck guitar, yep. and I thought, man, that is so badass. How do you top that? So I took it. and I had a guy actually build a chainsaw and a guitar together. So I got a guitar neck up here, the chainsaw at the bottom of it, and uh, and it's so badass that I don't even have to have a dragon and brought her down the leg with my pants. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's yeah. it's an amazing thing, and it just kind of happened. Yeah. It's, it's a, a signature for yeah, you. Yeah, you know, we, we, uh, I think it was like the third, second or third album that we had that made. And so, I mean, we've never shot away from the chainsaw. I mean, a lot of people were... You know, you ever thought about, you know, you, you still do the chainsaw? Well, why not? You know, that's like asking Kiss, do you still wear your makeup? Do you, you know, or Angus, do you still wear your little schoolboy outfit? Or, well, hey, right, right. You know, it's a signature. Or, or, you know, I mean, that's, you know, that's what we are. That's who we are. I mean, it, it, it's something that uh, was a calling card for us. And, you know, we were blessed to have everybody connect with it. And, I mean, I, I'm proud to do it. And we crank it up every night. And then, But then there's also Down on Me and Will It Rain yeah. and, and Locked and Loaded that we do with Brian Johnson uh -huh. from ACDC. And, you know, push comes to shove, and I mean, we all it is. Yeah, we. I mean, we've been fortunate enough to have a you know dirty little mind, and and then even the new records. I mean, you know, when we break into like encore and screwdriver because of the TV show, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the stuff that got featured on the TV shows, you know, turned into their into their own versions of hits, if you will. You know, people expect to hear them when we play a lot. Well, you just totally took over Sturgis, the whole situation. I mean, Sturgis was big from the beginning, and well, almost a million bikers that show up at that festival that whole weekend, but... Yeah, I figure... Uh, uh, taking over. Yeah, I figure Dick Clark can have New Year's Eve. I'll take Sturgis. You know, that's a good yeah. analogy. <laughs> Dick Clark can have New Year's Eve. Like, <laughs> you know, I love Sturgis, and, uh, and and there's so much history out there, and you know, and, and I feel that it should be a mandatory requirement that every goober on the in, in New York City and Los Angeles should be made to have to go and stand out on the plains and go to see Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse, Deadwood, mm -hmm. Devil's Tower, uh, you know, all of that's within, you know, 15 minutes to an hour at the most from the Full Throttle Saloon. And, of course, the Full Throttle Saloon is the must-see place when you go out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. It's the last, you know, beyond Thunderdome for, you know, for you know people who like a hot-ass woman, a, a badass bike, and a cold drink. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, um, it's really interesting. Ever since I put you on sale here and said Jack was coming right. and Jesse James was coming, um, got a lot of interesting remarks, you know, and I'll tell you what, what I'm talking about. You know, we put any anybody on sale, especially Rock and Rolls, love the music, love the album, love this. So many people said, what a great guy. What just responded just what I'm about you for bringing us in? No, well, besides that. <laughs> no, they call me a smart guy. Oh, so you're a smart guy. You, no, really, it's just amazing that your reputation out there is just about being a down home. Everybody here in the hallway, for example. Everybody's got a story about a connection with you. I saw I, I saw him at the saloon. He hung out with us till two in the morning. Uh, he shook. He came off stage and shook all our hands. He did this. He did that. I got to congratulate you for really understanding the importance of touching the fans as opposed to just man, playing for them. I'm, I'm just a blessed son of a bitch. I mean, you know, I, I grew up. I mean, all the guys that paved the road for you know for what we do. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up. I think I paid for Ted Nugent's house when going to see him play and and and, and ZZ Top and. And Aerosmith and ACDC and just all the you know, Judas Priest and you know just all these bands that we grew up loving and you know it, it's I mean we're, we're we're a tribute to them and all the guys before them that you know that 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 you know that paved the way again and um, I don't try to take us overly serious in the sense of you know we don't live in a bubble you know we've never carried ourselves like that and and uh, you know I think my mama would whip me if I <laughs> if 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 I did start carrying or, or, or trying to act like we belonged. You know, isolated from everybody. And I, I've never understood why bands, you know, strive so hard 
to be able to, to have people buy into, you know, and support their career and, 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 and believe in what they do and then want to damn distance their self from mm-hmm. everybody, you know? That's right. And, uh, and, and for me, it's just it's an inspiration. There's a lot of ideas come from talking to people, too, because you hear about, you know, funny stuff or, yeah. you know, serious stuff or whatever. And it's, it's always, you know, so I just got through doing that bottle signing over at the mm-hmm. store down the street. And, you know, just the coolest people come in, and, you know. Yep. And, you know, a lot, most of them come to the show tonight. Some of them could come because they got to go to work. Mm-hmm. But they were telling the story about you know where they'd seen us when they were younger with this that and other. It was just I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't, I, we don't take it for granted. Not not to not to just belabor the issue about the full throttle saloon. Yeah. And how just how much it's taken? It's fifth season, sixth sixth, sixth season, right? And um, of course you're right. Uh, but how, you know how much of a reality show is reality? Anybody that questions it, I just invite you to come stand beside me. For the day, because I mean, you know, there's, I mean, it's all happening right there in front of everybody. If, some of the stuff, I mean, you're yeah, doing your own stunts, like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if, but if you think about it, I mean, if, if if it was all staged or whatever, then people would be on the internet going, "No, oh, I was standing beside them when they staged that." Mm-hmm, oh, right. you know, but I mean, stuff blows up right in front of people. I mean, it's you know, amazing. I mean, there's no, I mean, it's, you know, it's a Bruce Willis yeah, movie yeah. the whole time. Thing. But there, I mean, there are some, there are certain times, and I'll be honest with you, and you got to know this happens that there's certain times. That, that that Mike and I may have a conversation that that um, the cameras aren't rolling or there'll be a camera that's going down or whatever and and, and the, the film producer will say can you guys not talk about that right, oh, right now right, right, right. not talk about that don't talk about that right now or we could be somewhere where it's really loud and something could somebody we could get a phone call and we'd be talking something something happened away and they'll say stop right you know don't don't, don't freeze go somewhere else yeah because we, you know we're missing it you know so we'd have, we'll have to go relocate and pick it back Move up the magic you know? a little yeah bit. well just because you know the, the, their job is you know the, the crew is to capture the day in the life mm-hmm. and um, and there's you know there's there's a lot of money that the network puts I mean there's a small army of about 60 people that have to live out there for you know about you know, a couple of weeks sure you know and uh, and, and they're going just non-stop you know just I mean you know shooting and dragging my heavy ass cameras around and well the spirits talk about them going non-stop the spirits are really taking off the Jesse James Bourbon just won the industry brand growth award uh, this past year uh, I, I'm really proud of, of how that's taken off uh, uh, and then the full throttle slim moonshot. We've had it out about a little over a year now, and, and we're just out. We got about, we're probably about 28 states with it, and uh, you know catching up with the bourbon, which is at 43. And um, we just bought this little town, this little downtown area of Triple Tennessee, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a little town that was about to go out of business in the far northwestern tip of the state, and they were about to go unincorporated because they didn't have any commerce going on. Mm-hmm. And we went in and bought the cotton gin at the end of Main Street. We bought the, a little barbecue restaurant we opened up. and the first restaurant in that town in 20 years. And a uh, little general store tasting room that we put up. And ever since we've had that going, uh, this, the, the little town's not only not bothered to be unincorporated, they just bought a brand new police car mm-hmm. and they're building a new fire station. How about so, that? So for every bottle sold, you know, it's, it's actually going back to help contribute to this little town. The rebirth of an American city. and. We've had, we've had some cameras down there. We've been shooting. We maybe try to put something together around Trimble. I gotta tell you, Jesse James Dupree, it is an honor to meet it's you. It's an honor to meet you too. Finally get to work together. It's, well, like, it's a good day. You are a, a true, a true, um, a true American idol. I gotta tell you. Uh, you know, really, you that, are. You're a, a role fancy, model. That's a fancy way of saying I got a wife and three kids, so I work. <laughs> that's the way. We it's. are backstage with Jesse James Dupree of Jackal. Uh, full throttle saloon, uh, moonshine of his record label, just all kinds of stuff. I want to grow up to be like Jesse. See you next time. Pow! <laughs>